In this video, we're going to be completing the Alpha Omega Easter Egg in this brand new series I like to call Beating Every Easter Egg in Call of Duty Zombies History, I guess. I'm choosing to do Alpha Omega first because much like this game, it's very underrated and overhated. I'm also going to be Primus and Nikolai because, I don't know, this is the only map that he's really in charge of the group. We don't get to see him in Tagged or Toten, so I felt it would be fitting. Most of the time, you know, it would be Richtofen, but I don't know, I guess it'll be uh, Primus and Nikolai. This is the loadout I'm going with for elixirs. I had a lot more of these, but I did this Easter Egg thrice yesterday, so I kind of burned all of these. This is just to get through the map a little bit faster because I don't have any shopping freeze. Equipment's always nice to have. I'm going to run raindrops just because I got some to spend. These are the perks. I'm going with quick revive, dying wish, stamina up, and winner's whale in my modifier slot. I'm running the strife because I have the bayonet on it, which will make the first four rounds all one knife, giving me the most points. Wraith fire because it's simply the best equipment. And then honestly, you could either go with the Ragnaroks or the Path of Sorrows. This just makes one of the Easter egg steps a little bit easier if you don't have stamina up. So I'm going to run this. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Like I said, I did this Easter egg three times yesterday. My best time out of all of them was one hour and six minutes so it'd be really nice to see a sub 60 here i'm not a speedrunner by any means but i've been trying to learn the black ops 4 maps easter eggs because i did a couple of them back in the day but i don't know enough of them to stream them and look like i know what i'm doing so i want to learn them off camera or do these videos to help learn them and then stream them for you guys later now, honestly you know what say what you want about alpha omega but i think this is a good map truthfully like i like nuketown i played nuketown over town which might sound crazy to you guys but back in the day i just like the challenge of nuketown i like the idea of having these multiplayer maps be turned into zombies maps and this is not really, I mean, aside from the cul-de-sac area, this is not a remaster of Nuketown. This is, I don't think this entire area has ever been done on any Nuketown before, other than if you've been no-clipping outside of the map, so it's cool to see what they put into this area. It's really nice to see it come full circle with the whole, oh, uh, back in Black Ops 2's Nuketown, there was the Easter egg that you could get underneath the bunker in the back of the green backyard, because I think you could hear Marlton there. This is the last of our extra credits. Please be double points. It is. It's actually very nice. That's the rare double points off rip. Usually they get a nuke or an insta kill on these lower rounds. That's gonna get us exactly where we need to be in terms of points. I think I'm gonna pop a, uh, a rain drops before we get out of here too. All right, let's just do it one time. Does give you perks too. This, 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 this for the perk. Stronghold. Please don't give me another nuke. Oh, nice. Another double points for that. Look at all the points we got now. Now we're living. Now we are literally living. We're going to cruise through this Easter egg. So now that we have all the points in the world, I'll show you guys my strategy that I run. I like to start going to this house over here where Rushmore's at because there's a shield part. So you just basically run through, pick up the shield part, and then keep progressing through the map. The other side, the part that you would pick up over there is one for the, the telepad. So you don't really need that right away. Whereas the shield's kind of a necessity on this map. And then I loop through the middle of the map over towards this area where there's another shield part. Nice little reference back to the old days. It's turn on the power for the first step of the Easter egg. It makes the map just look so much better. In this building, there's another telepad part. Now we can make our way down the famous bunker. It was actually a diner the whole time. Turn on the power like four minutes in. We've already got 10,000 points thanks to our OP elixirs. There's another telepad piece in here as well. But look at this. Like Most people think that Alpha Omega is so hard and you know there's so many parts to collect. In four minutes, we made it all the way down to power, and we already have all the parts for the shield and two out of the three telepad pieces. You don't actually need to build any of the Mark II frames to do the Easter egg, so you don't have to worry about running around doing any upgrades for it. Alright, nice. Now this should open up. Let's go over here and get the codes. Alright, so the first code is bottom APD, which is 0863. Second code is 3792. And then we gotta run back down there below the ground and pick up this key. I'm gonna get stamina up while we're down here as well. We need to do the valve step to turn on the rest of the power and open up pack a punch. There's one dirty valve over here. In this room, this is also where you get the last part for the, uh, the telepad, so now we go through that. Thanks to kill, yes perfect for this step. I'm going to try my best to keep this going. really don't want to kill the last dog here. I want to be careful on my points too because we're going to need Galvanuckles here. I don't want to open up the entire map and not have enough. Okay, two down. I'm just going to open this up and keep turning this event. Okay, three down. One more to go. Hopefully it didn't end the dog round. This should be pretty much the entire map open too. Don't want to down here. We'll be around behind where we want to be. Usually you want to be starting this Rushmore step on 5. 
But it's okay, we're making good time anyways. It should be the dog round, right? Yep. Now we have put in the codes to Rushmore. The first one is 7626. While oh, he's talking, I'm gonna run over here and get this last one. That's one we get from the key. 0259. Russian, yes. Soviet, no. So we got two of these now. Hello? Now that we were able to trudge through that code, that was kind of a brutal start. We should be back on track. I'm gonna buy the Galv Knuckles and head down to the bunkers, as well as turning on subtitles so we can hear all these awesome codes. So I think there's four, maybe five TVs in the bunker. One of the five or one of the four will be turned on, like this one. What you want to do is knife a zombie next to it with the Galva Knuckles and we'll turn it on. I'll start spitting out the codes you want to see. Maybe? There we go. Alright, so we have all the codes. So each of these houses are labeled A, B, C, D, E, F. You can tell which house is which by the mailboxes in the front of them. And you'll take the Galvin Knuckles in here. You're going to want to move the clock. So the first one should be 645. If you hit interact, so F or X or square, it'll move the minute hand. And if you knife it, it'll move the hour hand. Next one is D. This one should be set to 515. Gets knifed one more time. Never mind, we got it. The next one should be A, which is this one right here. See? A. Just a couple of knives here. One more. Beautiful. The next one is F. Should be set to 830. Nice. Now the last one should be B. That one will be set to 3 o'clock. There it is. So once you put all of your codes in, the one house you didn't go to, which... In our case is going to be E, that's the Rushmore building. You're gonna go and knife this clock, and it will go crazy and spit out a random time. Up here. Ah, very good. That's crazy, actually. It literally moved once. This one is 1015, so it should be 1015 on Rushmore down here. You put it in. Hit enter. He'll say no. He'll lie and say, I don't trust you. It's incorrect. You didn't do it right. But in reality, you did. You get a free Pack-a-Punch Ray Gun Mark II. But in case you didn't want a free Pack-a-Punch Ray Gun Mark II, you also get a free Pack-a-Punch weapon, which in our case will be the ICR, which is a pretty solid, good weapon, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes you get some shitter weapons out of that. So we're going with a Pack-a-Punch ICR now, and a Pack-a-Punch Ray Gun Mark II, which is a big win. Go and re-interact with Rushmore. This is everyone's favorite step of the Easter egg, which is finding a red Nova 6 crawler. So here he comes. And he is a one-shot, so if you hit him and you kill him, then you'll have to go again another round. All you gotta do is just get close to him, it'll come at you at a faster speed. Shoot you if you get a little bit farther away from him, but you just stay close to him and he'll, he'll follow you where you want to go. We're gonna lead him this way, up and out of the APD. Remember, you can spawn anywhere in the bunker, I think, so it really just depends on where you spawn at. You know, people that are going to complain about this step, right, say this is too hard. This is literally the Valkyrie step from Quad Krogi. So if you hate the Valkyrie step, like, let's keep it consistent. You know, hate this one too. But if you're like, oh, that's a pretty good step. It's Quad Krogi. Then, you know, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell you. But that was super easy. That was that step. So now we're going to run back to the APD room. Just so that we can build the telepads because we're going to need that here very shortly. I still have to get a new shield. Something we should probably pick up before the next step. I don't want to just completely forget about it and then take it down and be like, well, how did I die? And I just never had a shield the entire time. So what you want to do, reactivate Rushmore and then run down here. And also activate Sergeant Adam. My guy, what up? So we need to take Adam over to this room and Marlton will shed his pants and throw his, throw his canister out here for us. Come on, Marlton. We're making great time right now. I think we're about like this 23 minutes in. Like we are moving. Well you are to win my trust. I'm doing this now because we're gonna need it eventually. And that is getting brain rot on this weapon. Wreck my run. There it is, brain rot. Now for this run, we wanna put one of the telepads right here. 
You can either put the telepad here in that backyard where the mystery box is. Also, put the other one right here. Hopefully Adam disappears shortly so he doesn't kill the jack off. That would be tech. First of all, pause. Second of all, it'd be terrible, but he just literally face He's like, all right, that was enough. Now we literally just sit here and wait for a jolting jack. There's one, perfect. Let's go. Yeah, you lure the jolting jack over here so that he shoots that, just like he did there. Perfect. And then you pick this up, you hit that, run through the telepad. And then you don't actually need to do this, but I'm just gonna do it anyways. Pull out your specialist. Katana and run over here and hit this. We had enough time to even mess up too. Now this next step is very similar to the Mauer de Toten step where you shoot a zombie and turn it until it runs up against the wall. It opens up that door in the hotel room. For this step, try to get Brain Rot to turn a zombie up here. And he will go and run and reveal the code for you. And the first code is 7744, easy enough. We are making really good time right now. I think we're on the second or third last step here and we're only like 27 minutes in. Could definitely be the PR we're looking for. Stronghold is really not a bad perk to get out of that, uh, raindrops. 89, 13. And then the last one is this George Washington one over here in the lounge. Should be the first one that we turn right away anyways. Alright, so this one is 2024. Super easy to remember. Next COD Zombies title. Beautiful. I have to interact with them to continue. Yep. Broken arrow your patriotism beyond any shadow of doubt. Grab this while we're up here. The step's actually pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie. The step itself is really easy, but this animation right here. That's sick. So this one is switches around the map that we have to make sure are flipped in the right direction. This one needs to be up, and it is. Another very Gorod Krovi esque step. This one also needs to be up in the up direction. Next one we're going to go to should be in the lounge. This one needs to be in the down position and is. Next one is in the generator room. This one needs to be in the up position. And the other two that we need are storage and solitary. Storage needs to be down. Well done. And now all of them are green. And we can turn the power back on. Power back on, and now we only have two more steps to go before the boss fight. We are moving. We gotta be just over the 30 minute mark, I think. I think we gotta reactivate over here. The rushy. And now the fifth and final core value of Project Broken Arrow. Prepare. This last one is about three holdouts where you gotta just run around and survive for I think 60 seconds a holdout. There are six different robots that will spawn around the map. Only three of them will come alive and active. It's either right here or back in the yellow backyard, whatever one spawns first. Now what's nice is it's not just random after that, it's basically if it spawns right here first, then the next one will be underneath the yellow house in the bunker. But if it spawns in the yellow backyard, then the second one will be below this bunker in the diner. And then the last one is either in this backyard over here or in the uh, interrogation room or holding room. There he is, sparking up over here. All you do is interact with him to turn him on. And it'll activate the holdout. I don't think you really want to kill anything during these holdouts because it'll make it more hectic and crazy when they respawn. Unless you really have to like that, but you kind of want to just make your way around. Really nothing that you could be using them for, that's the first one done. What you do here is pick up the arm. Now we're going to want to loop back around to the diner. Second one should be right here, as it always is. This is one of the easier holdout rooms too. I'm gonna, I say that and watch, now I'm going to go down. But this one's pretty solid, you kind of just run around over here, do some loops. I think you can actually leave the holdout room, it'll just make you restart the holdout. Probably one more loop, maybe it'll be the end of it. Done already, awesome. We'll pick up this arm. And then the last one we need will either be in, I think it'll be in this backyard. Oh, okay, so if it's in diner, then it's gonna be back on this side again. Yep, here he is. This one's one of the more difficult ones too. I mean, you get some space to run around back over that way. But like overall. Head. And we run over here and pop the head in. 
And while they have their little dialogue scene, we're gonna run back and grab a fresh shield. Now they have their little dialogue right here, and this last step is gonna be escorting an orb. And we have to find somewhere on the I think this orb has two possible spawn locations. The first being up in this room up here in the yellow house. And if it's not down here, then it'll be next to Pack-a-Punch. You know, Z-Strike borrows a lot from Gorad Krobi now that I'm thinking about it. Rushmore is basically Sophia. We got the Valkyrie Escort step. We have this Gersh looking orb step. But see, then the other side of it is like, okay, if you're gonna complain this is a bad Easter egg, then like, you hate Gorad Krobi too, or what? All I'm asking is for you to keep it consistent, you know? I have to leave that max ammo over there. I can't get too far away from the orb. See, like, all we have to do is get this back to the APD room, and instead of just going this way and around the corner, it's gonna make me go, uh, pump fake up and around the map. Because it would be too easy if it could just go right to the APD room. Right there, literally right at the end. Nice, orb complete. This is Peter McCain. Oh my god, it's Peter McCain, the guy from Shinonuma that hung himself. Alright, yada yada yada. Well, he's gonna be talking. I wanna do something productive and go grab my uh, Dying Wish Perca Cola. That up. Now we just tell Rushmore already. Alright, now it's boss fight time. But quickly, quickly before, let me get Winner's Whale. Because the boss fight actually disables that. Turn this on. And get it going. Having this ICR was actually really nice, such a good weapon to have. Now hopefully we get this done before the ray gun runs out of ammo too. Might need to... I don't want to pop a raindrops before the last little bit. Or we gotta put the Avogadro back in the, uh, the system. Nice. Done. Oh my god, it's opening. Elemental Shard is mine. Into the pyramid, kids. Into the big Illuminati pyramid. Whoa! That's the Avogadro from Transit. Who would have thought? Oh my god, Director Purnell, is that you? Cornelius Purnell was a mortal name. It cannot encompass what I have become. If you must call me something before I destroy you all, call me Avogadro. Hey, that Nuke? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Nuke. Nuke him! Nuke him! Oh my god, nuke the electricity, that's gonna stop him. Everyone in the bunker, everyone in the fallout bunker, shit. Three, two, this is definitely one of the coolest Easter egg endings. What up, buddy? Ah, Ted, how are ya? Didn't even see it sitting over there. I don't think we're gonna run out of Mark II ammo before we get the free max for completing this, but cross my fingers just in case. Oh man, that was calling me out by my name. I don't know if it's this room or the next room, but he starts this like double hit ability and it gets kinda crazy. After every one of these you get a max ammo and a carpenter. Number two. Kind of really in the open here. Come on, we need to hurry up. I think we're at like around 50 minutes here. Oh yeah, shit. There's that double hit ability he almost got me with. It's either a double shock or he has one where he does like a, a rush at you and the rush is pretty crazy. Two down. I feel like the first one is the longest one. where he starts that stupid ass charge shot. Whoa, did I just lose my weapons? Oh my god, I was like, what the hell? I thought they just completely disappeared. I was like, are you shitting me? We're gonna, we're, that's really gonna happen to us right now? Let's go, three down. Plus we didn't get the max ammo from that last area. It's it's fine, you know what, we're good. We're just gonna, we're gonna push on. Shit, and we're low on ammo. We're literally right there, dude. We're literally right there. Nice. Run, run, run. Okay, so for this last step, all we have to do is go back to the APD room, have him spawn in there, and we just push him back into the pyramid. All right, here we go. This is what we want to do. Run over here and punch him. 
and shoot him back to the APD. Go, go, go. He's right there. Let's go. Oh, that was so easy. I love how crazy it goes and then literally you just get sucked right into the machine. You have this hype music and you're just there freaking out the entire time. And then it's so calm at the end. Just get sucked in and it's like, alright, there it goes. And kids, that's how transit was made. The second time. In every universe, transit's made. Even the Dark Aether. Speaking into existence. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Open up, open up. And that is the Alpha Omega Easter Egg, ladies and gentlemen. That had to have been sub-60. That had to have been sub-60, I'm not even kidding. Ass, the elemental shot. Oh my god, it's Dr. Minty. I remember seeing this for the first time and I was like, what the fuck is going on with this story? <laughs> damn. And that's the Samantha that we have in the Cold War universe, so... She has definitely seen some shit. Ah, shit. That's all we fucking need. This part was epic, too. Good Easter egg run, guys. That was a good way to start the series. Oh, my PR is now. Actually, you're not. Oh, misinformation. No, you're not. Hate to break it to you, but you're not. But that is it. The Alpha Omega Easter egg. Survived nine rounds to beat it. Actually, it was ten. No downs. Only like three OP elixirs used. That was a quicken. That was a very quicken, I'm not gonna lie. Did we have enough to prestige? I don't think we did. I do not think we're all the way there yet, no. But we fucking got it. Let's go, guys. Sub 60, 50, just under 58 minutes. Big W. Definitely the PR on Alpha Omega. But that is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more of these Easter egg run contents. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Peace.